Welcome. This is Rolf Versus, also known as Block Ops. We've got the monthly update for Horizon. So much happens in every month. It's fun to do these things. And make sure you stay for the entire uh, presentation so that you can ask us anything at the end. And I'm going to introduce my co-founder, Rob Viglioni, who's going to be your host for this presentation. Finpunk, all you. Thank you, Rolf. And hey guys, I hope you, you like our, our new video setting here. So we did it once before, and then uh, I think now uh, Rolf and, and the team and Lucy have perfected everything. So really happy for this. Um, so we, there's a lot of news uh, over the last month. Uh, there's a lot that's been going on in the background, and we're always really happy to get out there and, and actually talk to you guys about what's going on and shed some light into you know, all, all of the cool stuff that's going on. So we'll, we'll stick with the usual format. We'll dive right into the community highlights, and then we'll get into some BD updates. Then we have a whole bunch of uh, development project updates. Uh, I'll ha hand over to um, Mauricio to go into detail on a lot of that. Then we'll hand over to um, to Alan to talk about the secure node system updates and improvements. There's some new stuff there. So for node operators, please stick around, pay attention. And then I'll pass to Lucy. We'll go over a bunch of marketing updates, and then we'll get into the regional activity. Um, so you guys, like, like Rolf said, um, you know, definitely per try to participate, but first thing to do, you know, besides, you know, before we even get into everything, hit the like button on YouTube guys and, you know, share this around social media and get the word out to support the project. So next slide, please. We'll get into the community highlights now. So three outstanding community members that we wanted to mention. So we have a, a long time mention here. So it's kind of funny. So you are, you are constantly being highlighted. Um, but we're actually constantly being pinged and reached out to by community members who you personally help. And you, you know, you've made their lives a lot easier and they are extremely appreciative. So we get a lot, a lot of these messages from people. So, you know, keep doing an amazing job. And, you know, but I absolutely expect to see you up here in the future many times. Uh, the second one actually is Chiara. So Chiara is a very talented artist designer out of Milan, Italy, and had the pleasure of meeting her uh, with Luca and our Milan team uh, when I was when I was in, in Milan last. And she's just been doing a phenomenal job. If you guys look at our Telegram channel now, we have a whole new palette of options for Telegram stickers, which you can see here. Here, I love I love the action shot where she's actually drawing out and you know designing and painting these these um, stickers, so check it out. Lucy's gonna go into a little bit more detail on that, but Kara, thank you so much. Love having you in the community and love the participation. And the final mention here, last but not least, Dean, absolutely amazing supporter. Uh, I actually missed our conversations on Telegram. That's totally my fault for not being as active recently, but Dean is prolific on Telegram and really just such a, a positive, um, you know, productive voice of rationality and support and help for the community, always brainstorming new ideas, helping people out and really, you know, being so enthusiastic and now taking a, a much more, you know, or I guess a more formal role as a moderator admin on Telegram and helping out actually managing that channel. So love to see the community kind of stepping up and, you know, making life so much better for our community members. So thank you very much, guys. Next slide, please. All right, so the big elephant in the room, everyone. This was actually a long time in coming. We wanted to talk about this, but the, there was a big announcement yesterday. If you've missed it, Zcash uh, did a, a major announcement where they went into a little detail on their cryptography for ZK Snarks and a vulnerability um, that was discovered actually about 11 months ago by their most senior cryptographer. So while he was going through the mathematics of the original specifications and white paper, there was a, uh, a mistake that was found. And the mistake could lead to uh, potentially unlimited counterfeiting of Zcash and then all of the you know, uh, projects that have subsequently adopted uh, ZK Snarks and zero knowledge you know, technology from, from that project. And the, the team there so, uh, you know, very quickly designed and then took a period of time to develop and implement and test um, a solution to the problem. And the problem actually Maritsu is going to go into much more detail on. But the problem is a, a one, another one of a long string of inflation bugs in cryptocurrency. Um, and it could have been absolutely severe if a malicious actor had discovered it. So we were all very fortunate that Zcash has such a professional and ethical team 
that when they discover this, they went and you know designed and implemented a solution and then reached out to some key projects in the industry that use this technology, us and Komodo. And they worked with us privately to make sure that we upgraded our proving circuit. So we went from the original Sprout to now Groth 16 based proving circuit. And this alleviates the problem or eliminates the, the potential bug. So we're really, really grateful to the Zcash team for everything that they've done there, you know, besides just being brilliant in identifying this, which there are not many people in the world that could actually identify it, and then taking, you know, such critical steps forward to solving the problem, and then ethically disclosing this to select projects in the space that, you know, are using the technology and making sure that we upgrade before they announce publicly was absolutely huge. Uh, and there was actually a quote from Maurizio in, a Forbes, in Forbes yesterday, where he said, this really does signal that the industry is maturing significantly because uh, how many industries out there would, you know, companies decide to, if they found something wrong, go and tell, you know, every other company in their industry, what's going on, maybe not every other company, because you don't want the, you know, news to be leaked of such a critical vulnerability, but to do so in a very ethical, responsible way. So really, really uh, huge kudos out to the Zcash team for that. So uh, for us, when we did our Zen 2.0.16 upgrade, this actually solved the problem for us. So going forward, there is no, or at least this particular inflation bug has been patched and is no longer um, you know, a, a threat to the project. Um, so there is no evidence, probably the biggest thing to say is uh, once we found this out, you know, clearly we were uh, very nervous that this could have been exploited. So we did uh, quite a bit of analysis on our chain and Zcash um, you know, did similar analysis on their chain, looking for patterns, looking for overall coin supply to see, are there any aberrations, things that would indicate that there was a potential exploit? Um, something as simple as, do we observe more coins on the market than there should be? Because we know how many coins get emitted you know, for each of the blocks that gets mined. And if we observed greater coin supply on the market than should be on the market, that would be evidence that there was a counterfeiting exploit. Um, we've, we've observed no such evidence, Zcash has observed no such evidence, and Komodo has observed no such evidence. So it looks like the, the brilliant cryptographer on Zcash who discovered this actually was probably the first person to do it, and you know the damage was contained. So that's, that's at least all indications point in that direction. So we're, we're very confident as a project that all necessary actions to mitigate the risk have been taken. Now, an important point to mention is that all private transactions, so your Zen stored on shielded addresses and all of the messages that you've done using, using this technology or messaging technology are perfectly secure and your privacy is preserved. So a counterfeiting bug does not invalidate your Zen. So if you had Zen on a shielded address, if someone in the worst case scenario were to counterfeit Zen, they would not be able to say steal your Zen or destroy your Zen. Your Zen is preserved, your Zen is secure. Uh, and if you had messages that you wanted to be private, so you used our messenger technology, those messages are still private. So that's a really important point to consider. So other than that, just a, a huge shout out to the team. So we had Alberto working nonstop with our engineering team, working with Pierre, working with Reza, and the guys just did an incredible job on the, the most recent software upgrade, which, you know, very fortunately solved this problem as well. So next slide, please. All right, so quick refresher about our, our three big priorities here. So core technology, and, and the reason is the next slide, I'm gonna walk you through our roadmap uh, in, in more detail. So core technology, we have some, some really big core tech deliverables this year that are in progress. We have products, so our product strategies linking core tech to usability. And we have a very aggressive product roadmap from Gustavo's team. And then on the marketing BD side, we want to provide visibility into you know, points number one and number two, but we also want to have a very aggressive new user acquisition strategy. And we have a great team that's been doing this very methodically and planning out great strategy and implementing it on different projects. Um, we've also been doing global meetups and joining global meetup networks. Ralph's been doing an incredible job. He'll walk you through some of the meetups that he's been doing. Uh, we have some key partnerships we're working on. We have locked in the some that we'll be announcing. 
um, and a lot more in the pipeline that we're still developing and, and events. So now, of course, this is all being done in an extremely budget constrained environment. So we have to be very judicious with everything that we do. And I think the team now going through multiple iterations of cost cuts uh, has really honed in on exactly what's important and we're making sure that everything that we spend resources on maps to our overall strategy. So next slide, please. We'll get into the roadmap. Okay, so 2019, we've deemed the year of delivery. And the reason being is we have some very significant core technology deliveries that are in the works that we're pushing really hard to deliver to market this year. So starting off with what was delivered, actually in the last hard fork last week, um, were, were some significant blockchain improvements on the so in Zen 2.0.16, we had snark improvements, and Maurizio will walk you through some of those details. So if you want to do a shielded transaction now or send Zen to a shielded address, you'll notice it, it, it can be done uh, much quicker than it could prior to the upgrade. So that's a really nice usability improvement. We have node tracker improvements that Alan will walk you through. Full client wallet compatibility. So there's a lot going on on the wallet side. Uh, stemming from, in particular, uh, Sphere by Horizon release back in December. A continuous stream of improvements. I'll walk you through those, those uh, details as well in the Sphere by Horizon roadmap. But we also have other wallets and other versions of wallets being delivered. And we have a very aggressive roadmap on that with deliveries actually um, you know, coming very soon. Um, so we also have a very fun and exciting project that I'd say Jonas, uh, Gustavo, Vano uh, have been doing an incredible job spearheading called Horizon Academy. Really excited to release that in the very, very near future. So there's a ton of work that went into that. And it's going to be just a, a tremendous information repository uh, with blockchain general information, but also specifically for Horizon, obviously, right? Horizon Academy. Uh, so going into Q2, so we have more blockchain improvements. So here's where we're going to be implementing Sapling and our sidechain SDK. And what we mean here is the work on the Zen D side to enable sidechains to exist and to enable sidechains to now have a decentralized communication mechanism to launch and communicate with the, the main chain. So this will be delivered in, in our first sidechain SDK alpha, as we call it. We'll have Zen 2.1.0, which is what we're labeling our, our next improvement that will include sapling, as well as some additional improvements that we'll talk about. Uh, and then we'll have our reference sidechain testnet. So this will be a testnet set up specifically to now work with our sidechain technology and start looking at some, you know, our, our first implementation of a sidechain uh, and make sure that everything's working on testnet before we actually start pushing something to production. And, and then, of course, you'll notice that every single quarter we're going to have Sphere by Horizon improvements and also other wallet improvements. So we're not deprecating any of our wallets to date, and we have continuous improvements on all of them scheduled. Going into Q3, so our, our we're looking at actually launching formally our platform. So here's where we'll publish our reference sidechain. And where we're, so it'll either be this quarter or the next quarter where we'll, we'll have the big jump to Zen 3.x.x you know, x .x, uh, releases. So this will be a big one that will be you know, sidechain compatible. Or the other big question is if we're gonna push really hard on a block DAG, will we, which one will we release as the 3.x.x? That's TBD, but we will have a 3.x.x this year. Uh, we want our reference sidechain to be delivered to market, open source, make sure that other people can use that to build other sidechains. We want this to be an open system where other developers and projects and businesses get excited and build their sidechains and bring those to market in a way that is beneficial to the entire Horizon community and ecosystem. We have mobile, you know, iOS and Android uh, improvements or releases for Sphere by Horizon. We also have a mobile, um, a, a standalone mo mobile app that is multi-coin, initially starting off with Bitcoin and Zen. It will be released to market soon. And that's being released as iOS with scheduled improvements to make that Android. And our distributed VPN service that we alluded to back in December, we're making progress as a project there. And I'll, I'll show you some mock-ups today on some of the, the designs that the team have put together. Uh, very excited for that. And then at, towards the end of Q3, we're looking to have our sidechain SDK release in beta. Going into Q4, so what we want to wrap up the year with is a reference sidechain in production, 
which you know we also want and could be potentially our treasury side chain or have one in addition to the treasury side chain but what's really important is we have our treasury side chain so it's absolutely critical that we decentralize governance of the system we've been talking about this from the very beginning and now the side chain technology is just getting to the point where we'll be you know uh releasing our alpha for which makes side chains possible but still i don't want to um you know, diminish the, the massive magnitude of work that's going to go into making an actually truly decentralized governance system on a side chain that is itself decentralized. This is very non-trivial. It's a tremendous R&D effort that will be, you know, it, I think pushing the, the technology frontier for this industry uh, significantly. So very excited for that. And that's scheduled for Q4 of the year. And what we want to do and what Rosario has, has labeled as stretch goals we want to be able to do on-chain payment. So this would be another side chain. Um, there, you know, there were talks early on of doing main chain. It was decided, um, you know, Alberto is an architectural uh, genius, I would say, and it just doesn't make sense to do a lot of things on main chain when you could much more elegantly and at lower risk to the overall project, start partitioning out specific functions and doing them on side chain. Uh, automating payments for the node system is one such function that we really want to be on a side chain. Uh, we're also looking at uh, pushing hard our, our block DAG technology. So uh, Roth brought up a great point before this call started was, so what we've done thus far on block DAG was an R&D exercise with IOHK. So joint R&D where they, they did put together a prototype for um, a block DAG. The prototype is very simple to demonstrate feasibility for basic concepts of a block DAG. It, there is a tremendous amount of work of going from a prototype to a production level system, especially one that if we do this, and Alberto has some great ideas for accelerating the work, um, you know, this would be potentially a complete code rewrite to everything that we have. So this would be a moment where we would quite likely diverge from you know, Bitcoin core technology and implement something that's fresh, new, designed from scratch. This is a tremendous effort. It's listed here uh, by Rosario as a stretch goal. We would really like to do this. And of course, everything is resource contingent. Our resource base has contracted significantly, so we have to be very judicious with what we spend money on. But we have some very interesting ideas, um, in particular from Alberto on how to implement this at lower cost, and then from some of our other software partners to potentially come in and do this as a very big joint project and try to push it hard for this year. Now that said, I don't want to. Uh, I, what I what I want to do is temper expectations here because it is a very significant project, very very significant. It would be tremendous win for the project and would move us in in exactly the direction that we've envisioned and make us significantly more scalable. So our scaling solution being two part main chain massive scalability with a DAG approach and then a hub and spoke model with you know side chains plugging into our main chain. This would make us. You know, very fast, scalable, massive transaction throughput, and then be able to parse out specific functions on side chains uh, would be an awesome, awesome thing to do. So we're listing these as stretch goals at the very end of the year. Uh, you know, stay tuned though, because we do have some ideas to, to potentially accelerate some of this stuff, but let's, let's keep expectations tempered. Next slide, please. Okay, here's where I will pass it off to Rowan. Talk about an exciting VD development. Thank you, Rob. So very happy to announce a new Zen Fiat trading pair, courtesy of our friends over at Bittrex.com. Fiat on and off ramps, obviously extremely important to the success of our ecosystem. So being able to sit here and announce a Fiat trading pair offered by an exchange of Bittrex's caliber is a massive milestone for Horizon. Uh, with that in mind, I'd like to take a chance to say a huge thank you to the entire Bittrex team. Uh, I'm not going to name them by name because I'm sure they value their privacy, but you guys know who you are and you know that your support is much appreciated. If anybody in the community is interested in enabling their accounts for Bittrex USD trading, uh, process is really, really simple. You need to verify ID and then you need to walk through a straightforward bank account whitelisting process. Once you've completed those two steps, your account will be enabled for USD trading, and you'll then be able to buy or sell Zen directly with US dollars. Before I pass the mic back to Rob, 
uh, to provide an update on current projects. I'd just like to quickly highlight what the BD team is prioritizing in 2019. So from a bird's eye view, we can kind of categorize our planned actions into three buckets, I guess. Uh, the first bucket being accessibility. Uh, so this new US dollar trading pair falls very neatly into that accessibility bucket. We had a lot of success last year with new exchange listings, which has made it much easier to buy and sell Zen with currencies like Bitcoin, but not everybody has Bitcoin. So this year, the focus will be almost exclusively on fiat on and off ramps, because at this point in our development, I really think it's those fiat on and off ramps that will make a tangible difference to the accessibility of Zen as a currency and Horizon as a wider technology platform. Next up is the usability and adoption bucket. So this is where we're looking to negotiate or develop partnerships or integrations that add utility or value to the Zen ecosystem. Uh, and these things can range from simple merchant integrations right the way up through to enterprise businesses building on top of Zen infrastructure. And then the last bucket is education. And this is where a large proportion of the BD team are currently spending their time as the one thing we really need right now in the depths of what's been a pretty miserable bear market is to raise awareness of the power that this revolutionary new class of technologies actually holds. Uh, so this bucket is where we're working on creating a global network of educational meetups. And the aim here is to increase our user base, increase the awareness of what Horizon's working on and where we're going as a community. And that leads pretty nicely to pass back to Rob to talk about exactly that. So back to you, Rob. Thank you, Rowan. Uh, very eloquently stated, completely agree with all of that. So 2019 is going to be a big year for us in terms of maturing our infrastructure and what the BD team is doing is absolutely critical to that. So the, the projects that, that I'll talk about here, um, so we start with our completed projects and Again, guys, as, as usual, focus on the blue, items in blue because these are the ones that have changed since the last conversation. So the Zen, Zen D upgrade, so 2.0.16. Uh, so this was a, a big improvement for us on the SNARK side, and Maurice will get into that. Uh, the sidechain framework, though. So sidechain framework is, is officially complete. And actually, so the slide here uh, says that we have chosen a choice of framework to actually design to and build the sidechains on. It's the Scorex framework, actually, that was uh, worked on or built by IOHK, open source, provides an excellent starting point. And then from there, it's also, so it's written Scala, which is compatible with Java. So we have a team spun up that, that has been coding it on this framework for the last um, couple months. So very excited for that and excited to you know, actually come to closure on the framework uh, framework part of that project, and now it's you know a um, ton of coding that's going on to actually bring the alpha to market. Uh, Alan will get into the details on the, on the node tracking that's been going on. So Alan and Chronic have been working like crazy on that as well, making things more efficient uh, and make sure that this massive node network stays operational. So very very happy for that, and I'll, I'll wait until Alan hits his slide to go into those details. Next slide, please. Sphere by Horizon. So we delivered Sphere by Horizon back in December and then immediately started uh, some sprints on improvements. So we're, we're going to have uh, an improvement released in, actually in one to two weeks that will, will have some very, very good uh, improvements, especially for uh, advanced users who want a console. So very excited for that. And we have a very aggressive schedule from there. There were some initial bug fixes, the user console, and the ability to restore your larger seed phrase to Sphere by Horizon. Now, the sidechain work has, has commenced on the alpha, so we're marking that as 30% complete, and there is a map, or there are a mouthful of um, you know, tasks that have already been completed. So what's good about this, this row right here, or this cell, is that you can see, you can get a glimpse into the complexity that goes into this. Now, Alberto mentions this all the time, is this is not a plug and play project. This is very unique. It, it's something that will be ongoing for a very long time, but we will have you know, the alpha delivered, um, and then we'll have you know, continuous improvements on making it easier for people to actually launch sidechains. But check out some of this stuff. So the secret structure was changed and improved. So you, we're going to have a, a lot of cryptography that goes into this and a lot of coordination amongst actors all over a network, a trustless network where people don't have to know 
each other, but we have to be able to pass information. So there's, uh, Mauricio is going to mention a cryptographer that actually just joined the project recently. And we had a working session out, out in Kiev uh, where they were working through some of these very complex cryptography items. Uh, node wallet interface was updated. Uh, various transaction related fixes were added and actually coded. Uh, different optimizations and serialization and computation. Which is very important to make sure that this is done in, a, in the most efficient way possible and we don't release a clunky product to market. Uh, regression tests implemented for on the transaction side. Adjusted memory pool realization to make sure that the system is usable and not, not so system intensive that it requires significant uh, hardware to be able to run, run these things. We want our existing node network to be able to act as certifying nodes. Um, BLS, so BLS signatures, demo implementation um, to show capabilities. And this is something that Mauricio is as well um, and, and, you know, with, with the, his conversation on aggregated signatures. And, you know, what's really nice about this project is that it's a combination of science and, and engineering. So we have mathematician and cryptographer working with Alberto and his team. They've actually completed mathematical proofs of the side chain with, with uh, different sets of forgers, certifiers, and different combinations of different things that could go wrong. Very important work to be able to get this uh, done up front and to be able to demonstrate mathematical proofs that the system actually retains integrity, absolutely critical, rather than just building something with a hunch and you know pushing out to market and maybe doing testing, but there later on be some inconsistency with the logic or the mathematics that doesn't work. Being able to do this stuff in a rigorous way up front is, is very important. Now, there are more Zen D updates, of course. Every single month or every, every quarter, we're, we're going you know, to market with new Zen D improvements. Uh, so we have content being evaluated right now. What Rosario has been doing, working with Luca and the engineering team, is to actually create a formal process for how we propose, evaluate, and then come to consensus on what improvements go into it. Now, the low hanging fruit that we've been evaluating for a while. Overwinter and sampling, very important improvements that you know we we want to go forward with on the next the next release. Uh, but there are others as well. But the important point here is that we're creating a formal process for how we actually propose these things in a rational way and in an open way and come to consensus as a team to make sure that what we're doing is consistent with our strategic objectives and done in an efficient way where we're actually tracking you know progress and doing project planning to make sure that we're adequately resource loading improvements and you know, coming together with realistic estimates. Uh, the off-chain challenge and treasury projects you know, have not moved forward uh, because there's focus on others, in particular other aspects, in particular on the treasury side, uh, as mentioned previously, is conditional on the sidechain release. So of course, the, the work that we've done thus far has been paused to now focus on the sidechain stuff to then bring that first to market and then work on the, side, the treasury. Next slide, please. All right, so scaling study. So this is AOHK DAG research. Uh, it actually hasn't been delivered to us formally yet. So IOHK has, put to, has done the you know, mathematical proofs. They have done the technology demo with a prototype. Uh, and they'll very, very soon um, be releasing a paper and prototype to us uh, after it's gone through peer review. So this is uh, very important from a rigor perspective. Really happy to be working with the IOHK. IOHK team. Um, and once we get this, we have some decisions to make on our side of whether or not we spin up, say, a block DAG task force now and start planning you know, architecture and you know, different preliminary steps to actually make our stretch goal a reality by the end of the year, uh, at least to start working on the block DAG. Horizon Academy, I mentioned, is um, very close to complete. So it's 90% testing is in progress. Uh, content creation is always ongoing and will always be ongoing because this will be a living system that's continuously improved. Um, and the Sphere by Horizon Mobile, uh, so this is something, what, what we want is product consistency across platforms. And the Sphere team working with Code Particle and, and Gustavo's team, they're working on integration testing for a mobile client that is uh, compatible with their, or syncs with their, their Sphere by Horizon on every single platform that, in which they operate it. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm, I'm going to hand this off to Mauricio, but say huge, huge, um, you know, congratulations and thank you to our our team, the guys that you see here that worked like maniacs to bring this 2.0.16 improvement to market. Um, you can't see Chronic, you know, he's but 
amazing guy, and this team has worked worked their butts off to you know uh, design, develop, test, uh, and then bring to market um, a very important improvement for us. So please, Maurizio, have at it. Coming one second. <laughs> Okay, I don't stop my video, but I'll do it. Okay, I've got video as well. Thanks, Rob. So, um, well, we can start with this upgrade, and uh, if we go to the next slide, um, we can celebrate uh, the, the successful upgrade. Um, it's even stronger for us because we have been really tense. I mean, it was not a simple upgrade, it was done in a rush. Uh, there were good reasons to do it in a rush and uh, we changed our priorities to complete that in just seven eight weeks of full-time uh, coding for bertrand pierre on two different time zones uh, touching very very uh, delicate pieces of the software the zero knowledge proving system something that it's also hard to understand in 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 from a mathematical point of view uh, also for us so um tough and uh tense and intense uh, at the end of the day you know we relaxed when we made the first test and see that it was working and and then the project was was managed managed perfectly by chronic and luca who delivered then the 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 the, the software to all the actors who run the zmd software and that um, I'm thanking as a, the whole team is thanking for having upgraded uh, on time and making it very very smooth so that in the end was looked like a, an easy an easy task and um, and of course we are all happy that uh, that that it's working and it's working fine that we are now protected so maybe we can now that we can speak about that we can go to the next slide and have a look at the the vulnerability also because we didn't know much about that apart from the fact that there wasn't that there was one and um the yesterday zcash disclosed some details about that and um so we now know that uh, the previous system that was based on the uh, pinocchio protocol uh, it, it didn't have any problem as such so the you know the uh, the proven system that is uh, described in the PHGR13 uh, paper is okay. The problem is that the implementation uh, that the that, um, cache uh, did was based on a subsequent paper that is a, a paper that details how to implement it on a risk architecture in, a, in an efficient way. And uh, in that paper, there is a page that uh, describes in a very concise way the protocol itself. And uh, and everybody used that one as a reference for the protocol. Unfortunately, there was a mistake there. In one step, the one that is uh, that generates the proving uh, and the um, and the checking key. Yeah. So the uh, the two keys that are generated uh, at the very beginning and just once in the, in the process. It's the outcome of that. Process is the long string that we download when we hit the fetch params command uh, when downloaded the ZMD software. It's a very it's a huge file that is needed for the proven system to work. And uh, there was a mistake there, so uh, there was a vulnerability. And Zcash could have just changed that, generate a new a new string uh, with a very you know complex ceremony and. Uh, and change that, but they didn't have any way of justifying that change without uh, revealing the, the vulnerability. So that they decided to just, uh, as part of their sampling upgrade, to change to a different proving system that is more efficient, so it's easier also to, I mean, it's fully justified by that as a change. And that's what we did. And uh, so we have some more details now, and there will be more details coming uh, in uh, I think in a month's time, when Zcash tells more about uh, the, you know, how to use that. Okay, so that's about uh, you know the the. So I mean, of course, the the new circuit is uh, faster. So we we 
we are getting uh, improvement, better performance. That's fine. But the reason why we rushed is because of you know, the risk that we had. And uh, in the next slide, we, we take a quick look together at the projects that we are uh, working on now. So 2019, year of delivery, to deliver challenging projects, uh, we need a, a very skilled team. We need some, some skills and not easy to find, and uh, we managed to find them. So we've got a cryptographer now. His name is Vadim. A, a, an expert on uh, on blockchain mathematical model. Um, his name is Andre, and uh, and a senior, very fast, very um, experienced uh, Java developer. And uh, his name is Sergey Sergey. So, um, you know, very important addition to the team. And with them, we are working on three. Uh, um, projects or 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 sub projects one is the about the consensus so the consensus is the set of rules and checks that each node of a, of a blockchain needs to perform to validate elements that will go on the blockchain and uh, when used here we mean uh, uh, mm, proof of work uh, for our main chain and proof of stake for our side chain so now we are working on elements of our proof of stake uh, consensus and um, and uh, proof of proof of stake requires uh, forgers forgers are same as miners for a proof of work blockchain and certifiers certifiers are actors that are signing a, a certificate that is, that is the transaction that sends back coins from the from a side chain to the main chain and uh, what we're doing now for all this is to assess the security of the process of selecting uh, forgers and certifiers. And we are doing that through mathematical models. So um, that's the work that is going on and uh, ongoing on, on the consensus for, for sidechain. Aggregated signature is, is still about uh, the backward transfer. So when, when uh, uh, someone on sidechain wants to send back coins uh, from the sidechain to main chain, uh, certifiers need to sign. And we need to have a way of aggregating the signature of all the certifiers signing in one single field uh, of data. And we need the protocol for that. We've selected the BLS protocol and uh, we have now a demo where we can uh, sign uh, uh, to aggregate, we can aggregate multiple signatures, but what we miss still is the uh, the hashing uh, algorithm. So the the BLS uh, uh, protocol uses uh, 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 elliptic curve cryptography, same as um, I mean it's used a lot in uh, in uh, with sampling as well. This kind of cryptography uh, with different uh, finite fields and different uh, um, elliptic curve uh, groups, but uh, it's uh, similar technology, and uh, so we need to uh, have a function that uh, um, that makes the pairing between uh, that that converts the alphanumeric uh, characters into group elements uh, of, of one of the groups of the of, of the protocol. So that needs to be coded, and uh, and that's what uh, Vadim is working on uh, today. And uh, DSK objects, I mean, SDK, uh, I mean, if, if Java development uh, based on the SCORX framework, as Rob said, and we are working today on the forward transfer and the backward transfer. So we are, all these three areas are basically the same, it's the same element of the side chains from different uh, um, points of view. And all this will, will hopefully nicely, you know, come together uh, to, to you know have have uh, the backward transfer and forward transfer protocols working and i think that's it uh, from me rob thank you very much Maurizio. and let me put myself back on video um so if nothing else guys it just realize or understand just or get a, a feel for a little bit of the complexity that's going into this and this is uh 
a very unique first of its kind decentralized sidechain model that we're trying to implement on Horizon. So this is something that's going to take time um, and it's progressing wonderfully. So we're having significant victories on each of these uh, categories, but there's still a tremendous amount of work to, to go from there. So next slide, please. I'm going to give you or show you another uh, hint of another project that's been ongoing that we mentioned in our, our December live stream. Uh, so we are working on a decentralized uh, Horizon VPN. Uh, so we still haven't come up with uh, another name for it other than the generic Horizon VPN. Here's a little sneak peek at some mockups that our design team have done. So the project is, is on track and is executing right now where we're taking you know, an open source VPN protocol, GoVPN, and, and building this into what we hope will be a very usable, open, um, or decentralized VPN product for that our node operators will be able to run. Uh, what we want, so there are significant challenges. What we want, though, is this to be basically consider this uh, a design, uh, like a design partnership to bring to market uh, what could be the first of our you know future Zen store type of applications. Where what we've been talking about for a while now is we want to have um, you know many decentralized applications that our node operators can run and you know add add value to our network and receive value in return, right? So what we want our node operators to be able to choose to run for instance, this VPN product and be able to participate in revenue streams that come from the subscriber base uh, into the ecosystem to use this product. So very excited for it, but there's still some work ahead of us. What we wanted to do was just give you a, a little hint at you know, what the design team's done so far uh, and our product team and actually working on this. So more to come though. So I just wanted to get the excitement level or continue the excitement level in particular, because we, we keep getting requests from our community members where it seems like this is one of the most exciting products uh, for many people in the community. So we want to keep keep uh, giving you guys information as we go on it. So next slide, please. All right. So uh, our other, you know, what we call it our flagship app, um, it's Sphere by Horizon. And there there is quite a bit going on. So Gustavo's team went running through a very aggressive improvement schedule, and we have an out-of-cycle upgrade. Um, and what we mean by out-of-cycle is basically in the next two weeks, you're going to have uh, an improvement for Sphere by Horizon released. And you know, we say out-of-cycle because we have scheduled quarterly improvements. Um, this has you know this, the bundle that you see here of a user console for advanced users. And for those of us who prefer or are used to working with command line, this would be a nice feature for us to be able to you know, have more um, you know, flexibility and control of the wallet um, or the application and the wallet within the application. Uh, the ledger seed phrase restore, uh, it's being released and uh, as well as other bug fixes. Going next, we have, and I have some mockups to show you shortly, we have, we're continuing to improve the UI, the user interface. And for our node operators, one of the big uh, features that they love from Arisen are the batch withdraw and batch split features. These will also be implemented on, on Sphere by Horizon. Messaging system improvements. What we want here is you know, uh, quicker, you know, better speed on messages. Um, transaction history with historical prices. So one, one thing that uh, Gustavo and his team recognized was uh, you know, on, on your, your transaction history list, you would see the Zen amount that you sent in your history, and it would pull the current price feed. Uh, from the markets and and you know, pair that with you know or say that at some point in time in the past you know your Zen you would multiply by the current price and say this was the amount that you sent that that's being improved and we're having actual the historical prices instead of just the current price so you'll see an accurate price reflection there uh, node monitoring within Sphere by Horizon if you're a node operator which should be a really nice feature for node operators and then additional minor improvements to make it more functional and continuing continuing to improve, uh, improve or patch any bugs that we find along the way. Uh, and then going into you know um, later quarters in the year, we're going to have a mobile version for both iOS and Android released. I know that um, Nicola and CodeParticle have done already a lot of work for this, um, so we're going to you know receive that and schedule a whole bunch of battery of testing like we did for the beta product. Uh, and something that I'm personally very excited about, uh, and Gustavo is very adamant on implementing, uh, are human readable addresses 
which I think are very important to consider this sort of a DNSing system where instead of having a, you know, the, the typical string for, um, you know, a, a transparent or, um, or shielded address where it's, it's a very long string, it would be nice to say, hey, I want to send, you know, Rob FinPunk money and you type in FinPunk and it matches FinPunk with, you know, uh, other addresses that could be used to receive. So this is something I think is going to be a huge step forward for usability. Uh, so very excited for that. Uh, full ledger integration going forward and Bitcoin support. We want to add Bitcoin in here and then in wallet exchange using maybe some of our other partners that already do decentralized exchange. And I think critically for business support, something that I'm very excited for is multi-sig uh, within the wallet and making the process for multi-sig much easier. Because currently, uh, for those of you who, who use our multi-sig address type, um, you know that's something that we always do by command line. And it's it's cumbersome, to be honest. It, it's cumbersome to create a multi-sig address and then to you know um, go in and retrieve funds off it or spend spend from a multi-sig uh, if you're not, say, an advanced user. So for uh, a layman or someone who's not uh, comfortable with command line, for instance, uh, multi-sig is not a very usable uh, feature that we have right now. So I'm very excited for this feature to be included in Sphere by Horizon. Next step, please. Next slide. All right, so we've got a couple mock-ups here. Just to... So our design team's always doing amazing work and constantly getting ahead of, uh, or pushing forward. So really happy for that. Here's, here's uh, what our, uh, the next improvements for the UI will look like in the release coming in a couple weeks. And next slide, please. And co continuing down the, the UI improvements here. So you see things are more for uh, a user to be able to interact with the, app, the app application, to be able to receive, you configure uh, addresses and you know, features that you want in a more intuitive way. So constantly cleaning up and making things look nicer. Next slide, please. And something I'm very excited for is for our advanced users actually integrating a user application. So this is very important if you want to do more complex um, things with the wallet, or you know, if you just prefer using command line, um, it's really nice to have this and then to be able to see uh, have this directly in the app versus pulling up a terminal window separately. So happy for that improvement. Next slide, please. All right, so here's where I'll pass it off to Alan, and he will give you. The this in node, uh, the node world. Thanks, Rob. Um, one little correction on what you were saying, well, not correction, but we do use multi-sigs and the web page on the back end when signing payments. So it is possible to, to have interfaces with multi-sigs. Uh, regarding the secure nodes, last month we enabled the cert check that has been running on super nodes for quite some time. And the results of that were there were many misconfigured nodes, and we revealed some exploits for people who were taking advantage of the system. Some of those exploits were actually uh, reconfigured so that they're viable nodes now. So we don't really have an exact number of how many fell off, but our numbers did go down a little bit. And uh, we're down at, uh, this says 20,000, but we're back up to about 21,000 nodes that are active and up at this point. So many of the misconfigurations uh, have been fixed and many of those nodes are working properly now. Some of the nodes may have also, uh, that we lost recently may have been due to some of the, uh, the pricing of Zen, but that again is something that we would just have to, uh, have no way of really knowing. On the super nodes, we now brought those up to the same code base. So both secure nodes and super nodes are running all off the same code. It's just a matter of configuration. And we've, we've up to 2,800 nodes running on those super node system. Uh, we mentioned the node tracker before, and this was just actually released uh, last night, this morning. We, we set that up, and we're encouraging everybody to update to that node tracker, everybody who was running nodes. We got better connectivity checking, and we have um, random retries on reconnect. This is important because when a tracking server goes down, 
all the nodes will randomly reconnect so that they all don't reconnect at once. So this makes the whole entire system a little more robust. Uh, one of the other features in the node tracker is looking for the highest Z address balance in case you have multiple Z addresses on your node. Uh, we have latency checks in there so you can now see the connections to the servers and how long they're taking to respond. And there are other improvements. If you look at the README on the node tracker itself, see that there are a few other things that we added in there. Um, we're going to be requiring that everybody update to the 0.4.0 node tracker, but we're not enforcing that yet. We're going to give people time and we will publish a date when we'll actually uh, require that as a or enforce that as having to run on the nodes themselves. For both the uh, secure and super nodes, we're also looking at stricter requirements, uh, specifically around the stake address. It seems to be the next area where there, there might be, we have some sus uh, suspected exploits there, and we're finalizing those, and we'll be putting out a blog post and some uh, emails to all the node operators about that. And due to the 2.0.16 upgrade, the challenges take almost about half the time that they used to for doing shielded transactions. We are looking at lowering the times that it takes allowed for the challenges themselves. So we're going to be addressing those requirements. And there'll be notifications before we actually post or actually enforce those. So look for those types of uh, posts and emails to be sent out. And of course, we're still investigating any other type of uh, suspicious activity that's going on in the tracking system and looking at what might be uh, used to mitigate those types of situations. That's about it for the secure node update. And I'm going to pass this over to Lucy. Hey everyone, this is Lucy here from uh, This is something I uh, Now you can listen to Ryzen on your favorite podcast and you can find us on major audio streaming platforms such as uh, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Stitcher and so on So, uh, and we are also in the process getting approved on platforms. So the purpose of this is to make it easier for people to receive our latest upgrades, uh, updates and listen to Horizon presentations and interviews uh, that they're interested in. If you miss this monthly live stream, then uh, or didn't catch some of the interesting um, interviews Rob and our other team members did, now you can listen to them on your favorite pack, uh, podcast on the go. So please sure that you subscribe uh, to Horizon on these podcast platforms. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we ran a right after the launch of flagship launch. So congratulations to the very lucky winners who received one hundred dollars then. So make sure you follow us on all of media channels so uh, you don't miss out on any of the future events such as this one and next slide please okay one of the components of participating in this contest is to share some feedback after using the app and uh, um, and this is the most exciting part for us uh, and is all the honest user reviews that we received so we already received a total 157 user reviews from the contest uh, and all almost all of which are with instructive and very helpful suggestions and actually uh, five users submitted suggestions worked into the app so really really appreciate all the community input and we take them very seriously and uh, this is how we improve uh, both our products and services so i really strongly uh, encourage that you download our app and try it out yourself and let and you know if you haven't done so and let us know uh, what you think next slide please okay acre all right acre is a, a crypto micro investment app 
So uh, they previously known as Red. They recently did a rebrand. And uh, uh, Horizon is one of the first group projects that are integrated with Acre. So with Acre, people can easily buy Zen use spare changes uh, by rounding up their daily purchases. User can also set up a recurring deposit. And after an easy setup on the app, everything can just happens automatically. So it's, uh, and you know, you know, especially if you're busy, and you can also conveniently track your investment performance on the app uh, and make adjustment anytime. So uh, an app is available for residents in 46 states in the US. Uh, right now, we are running a special promotion. If you buy $10 worth of Zen, uh, you will get another $10 of Zen for free. So the promotion will end in February the 13th, uh, one day before the Valentine's Day. So if you are a resident in one of the states in the US, uh, you may not want to miss this one. And next slide, please. Um, okay, so this is my favorite slide. It's the new Horizon Telegram stickers, custom designed and hand drawn by uh, by Kiara as Rob mentioned earlier, Chiara is a very talented artist from Italy, uh, and these stickers will be uh, will be the uh, will 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 be first made available in our official Telegram community group. So if you want to be uh, want to be the first ones to use stickers, uh, so please make sure that you are in our Telegram community group. So the link is posted on the uh, the slide. So make sure that you follow the link and join us on our Telegram. And uh, thank you, Kiara, again for these awesome stickers. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, great. So let's get to the numbers. Um, I would say that we, I would say that we kicked off 2019. The year had a, uh, a performance, especially considering the uh, market condition. So we continue to see growth in our user engagement and retention rate across the world uh, while gaining new, uh, new users to our ecosystem. So uh, just wanna, I just want to highlight a number. So for instance, the organic impressions is up by almost 24%. On Twitter, and we see a huge increase in user activity uh, YouTube channel. So people love our live streams, uh, and the views were increased by over 300%. And the number of Horizon videos added into other people's playlists is increased by more than 70%. So um, I'm really excited about this, meaning that you know our video content is really, really popular, and we also see a great performance on our. Uh, blog site where we post all of our latest updates and news. Uh, we had overall uh, more visits each time to our blog site, and visitors who visited it read more than just one piece of updates or news uh, because, you know, as we can see, the bounce rate was down by 12%. So I'm really excited to know that people are really interested in what we are doing, what Horizon has been doing, and really pay close attention to our uh, activities. And next slide, please. All right, as usual, um, our footprint uh, and blockchain education in general. So this slide only really shows a very small collection of pictures of all the events our team attended uh, last month in January. So uh, just from by the orders, uh, well, our co-founder Rolf did a, vir a virtual meetups in uh, Nigeria uh, held by our uh, very awesome community member, our team member Mohammed, uh, and our Chinese community member, uh, community ma uh, manager Guan Ying went to Chang Club in Changsha in China. And our director of R&D, uh, Alberto, Kiev to meet with some of the InfoPost team uh, to discuss work on our side chain. 
and uh, our French community ambassador, Manon, meet up in Lyon and attended a woman only meet up in Paris, in France. Uh, and again, our co founder, Ralph, attended a Liberty Con in Washington uh, and not displayed on this slide. Uh, our Latin American regional marriage, uh, manager, Levis, held a uh, Horizon Meetup in uh, uh, Bogota in Colombia. And we also had a Horizon Meetup in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So um, we love hosting and going to meetups, local communities, and we have meetup groups all over the world. So if you're interested in attending one, uh, we, we really love to hear from you. Let us know. Uh, next, I will hand over to Ralph, and he will talk about the upcoming events. Ralph? Thank you, Lucy. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we've done some great events, uh, especially with the remote meetups uh, in Nigeria and Ghana, and um, one of our really enthusiastic meetup uh, leaders is going to be doing, uh, Sani is going to be doing uh, one in the Republic of Benin. So um, we have, uh, we like doing these remote meetups. Uh, it helps bring in lots of new people to uh, Horizon. And uh, I think that our business development team is going to work to continue to do more and more meetups uh, worldwide. So the ones that I've been doing with Students for Liberty, I'm gonna take a pause on those at the end of March. Uh, and I expect that people on the team are going to continue uh, to do these types of remote meetups and extend them, um, in-person meetups, remote meetups, uh, and extend them because we found they're a good way to bring new users uh, into the community and show the benefits of using Horizon. Uh, we're also doing a meetup in Australia. I wish I could attend that one, uh, especially this time of year. It's gonna be beautiful in, in Sydney. And we are uh, having a some folks go to the crypto asset conference in Frankfurt, Germany. And uh, so we have all these things lead up, listed here. We do have, I believe it's now 12 different Horizon uh, meetup groups. So we're, we're using the meetup.com application extensively. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, check and see uh, if there are meetups scheduled in your area there. We try to get them all on the monthly update, uh, but sometimes ones come up and we post them in a hurry. Um, so next we've got regional updates, and uh, this is uh, from our different regional teams, and um, I'm going to hand it over to um, Jonas to talk about the Central European and Kenya market. And Jonas, yeah. Hey, hey everyone. Um, so yeah, um, over the last month we've been to a few meetups, uh, namely Manon. Um, went to a blockchain meetup in Paris. That was a women-only meetup. Um, the organizer, Mami Crypto, uh, spoke about blockchain and the theme of the event was initi uh, initiation to blockchain. So for real beginners, um, Manon was able to help out explaining what 51% per, uh, percent attacks are, how to mitigate them. Um, and they also had some practical cases they discussed and they had a quiz in the end where Manon managed to take the win away. Um, also Arno uh, was um, at a blockchain meetup Saxony at the 9th of January that he's um, helping to organize from this year and they were talking about the collaboration between IBM Hyperledger and uh, Maersk that are doing a blockchain solution for supply chain tracking. Um, and then tomorrow, um, Manon will be at another meetup um, under the theme, what uh, users um, of blockchain um, can produce yeah, or can increase the common good. Um, so if you can make it spontaneously, uh, say hi to Manon. Um, and then, yeah, as Rolf just said, we'll be at the Crypto Asset Conference in Germany, Frankfurt, in late February. And that would be it from my side. Um, I'm handing off to Vano with the Eastern European Russian update, I believe. Thanks, Jonas. So lots of good things are happening in our 
Regarding our event participation, uh, we have attended the University of Georgia's blockchain master's degree program accreditation event here in Georgia. And it is worth mentioning that the University of Georgia will be the first university here to have a master's degree for blockchain. This is obviously a great thing for the country. We had all, then we had Cardano and IOHK in Tbilisi with IOHK's business development, Daniel Friedman and their researchers, Ed Skoda Fries and Peter Gazi delivering speeches. And obviously we have very good relationship with them. We attended the events and it turned out that Peter Gazi was the guy who actually contributed to our research too from IOHK side. And I made friends with them and chatted about the technology and they are great guys, obviously. Yeah. And just yesterday, we also attended Startup Grind Tbilisi's blockchain related event. Uh, and this event um, is um, always good events. The Startup Grind events are always good in a sense that the attendees are somewhat filtered, gathered uh, about the theme. And uh, they are also a lot of startupers there. So networking and pitching horizon with them is um, always interesting and beneficial. And then uh, we have coming in event announcement. I'll be speaking about our solution to 51% attacks about at the blockchain and Bitcoin conference in Prague on March 22nd. And as Prague is known to be a cryptocurrency, I would like to challenge myself and try to leave crypto only there, at least for a day to test things out. Regarding our social media, we have a series of polls already on and planned in our Russian language Telegram channel. And I'd like to call the community for action and ask them to participate. The group's name is Horizon RU. And please follow us uh, also on our regional social media channels. This is Horizon RU channels and Horizon GE for a Georgian language one. With that said, I am passing this to Luca for Italian market update. It's all yours, Luca. Thank you, Vano. This is Luca from Italy for the traditional uh, update. This time around, I'd like to uh, report a really nice event hosted by Microsoft in Italy. It was called uh, uh, Economics for Blockchain Successful Projects. And uh, it was interesting to be there for uh, networking, not just the uh, typical event where the speakers talk about the economic trends and future scenarios, but uh, a blockchain event about how to do blockchain projects, what are the industries where this technology is really making the difference, and uh, how to manage it. It was nice, uh, a good opportunity to take uh, business cards to present our roadmap about sidechains. And uh, once again, uh, it is uh, clear that the interest around, uh, um, let's say, uh, what we are doing, what is in our roadmap is very high. And um, the day I attended that event, there were four different blockchain events in Milan on the same day. So this confirms once again that uh, the blockchain revolution in act here uh, is, uh, is really big and uh, we hope it continues this way. Uh, I then also attended another event, uh, again hosted by Microsoft, called uh, Italia for Blockchain. Now, this was the launch event for the first Italian association of companies that are implementing uh, blockchain projects um, or even companies that are simply interested over the research and development in the, the blockchain space. Again, very high quality event, very interesting being there and big science companies attending. Um, in particular, there were some uh, head of innovations uh, from utilities, insurances, as well as, of course, CTOs. More in general, a lot of interesting people we'd like to meet again soon. Uh, above those two, I'm currently evaluating other to attend in the near term and uh, I'm speaking with two different system integrators. One is uh, very big here uh, in the country and the other one is uh, very small for um, potential uh, joint projects. Uh, um, but uh, I guess we'll speak more about this in the future 
once we will be allowed to disclose names. Uh, before I pass it back uh, to Rolf and Rob for q and I have to say thank you to the engineering team that made the successful art fork. And it was nice to see so many Italians involved. I counted a total of four, plus two Italians highlighted as community stars today. And that makes us very proud. So back to you for Q&A. Thank you, Luca. Appreciate it. That was a, that was a great update. Um, yeah, so like usual, we've uh, built up some questions here. Uh, Rob, and uh, you and I can tackle them and uh, bring in assistance as, as needed. And um, one of the things overall uh, that we uh, that I was thinking of as we, we got through and, and as we went through and did all the updates um, is that we do things in parallel. So there's there's a lot of great things that we get from uh, upstream from Zcash on the technology, but we've been building community in parallel with you know, miners and secure nodes and users and meetups, and we also um, like the node tracking system. Right now we do it centralized, but it allows us to test all the different things about the checks and the payments and things like that. So when we move it to a sidechain application, we already have a system running. And I think that you know that sounds similar to what we're going to be doing with the VPN, where we're going to build out a VPN system and then get it running on the sidechain once we've got everything figured out on, on how to get it going. Um, so again, everybody's excited about the VPN. Do you want to maybe address that a little bit more, Rob? Yeah, I mean, so, well, there, there's not much. Um, but we, we do have, you know, some interesting considerations that guys in particular, like Chronic, brought to the table that, you know, we have to deal as well with uh, concepts like laws in different jurisdictions. What happens if someone runs a VPN that, you know, a user, you know, broadcast child pornography over. There's the issues of, you know, some some VPS hosting providers actually don't allow you to run a VPN based on their terms of service. So there, there's a lot that we need to consider in the background. So in addition to this being a fun engineering project to build a decentralized system that, of course, like you said, Rolf, we want to ultimately go to some to you know fully decentralized automated payments on sidechain. We also have a lot of other considerations that are on the table on the legal side, regulatory side, on you know just how do we even build a quality product that's competitive in the product space. Uh, so there's a lot going on. And of course, we'll be feeding more information as the project evolves. Yeah, and um, the, the side chains are such a big deal because mm -hmm. as um, you know, you know, I've been doing this since we, we, we founded it and, and I've seen the team grow so great. And it's just, I mean, the the presentation, the, the graphics on it are, are beautiful and, and the team is hitting on all cylinders. It's yeah. just there's so much um, that we find out that we need to do as we continue along with the project. Like, like we get the Sphere wallet uh, going and we find out, oh, there's lots of different ways that we can improve it. And now we want it on mobile. And mm -hmm. now we want to be able to do shielded transactions. Uh, I saw one question, when are the privacy capabilities going to start? Well, we've, we've always had privacy capabilities and we've had from the very beginning wallets that allow us to send private and anonymous uh, transactions and messages. It's just we continue to improve how they're used, make them easier, and we have to teach people how to do this. That's why Zen Academy uh, is very exciting uh, to me. And so, uh, you know, being seeing how whenever we do something, we see that there's more to do. And that's the way it, it, it is in any kind of fast growing yeah. company. Uh, you're always looking forward and seeing, wow, we've got to do all this, we've got to do all this. It's worthwhile sometimes to look back and celebrate all the things that we've accomplished so far and all the successes mm -hmm. so far. I mean, this this upgrade that, that we did recently, that was a big deal. It was executed flawlessly. Um, it's, we have a very different process than when we first launched and had to do you know, some hard forks and uh, the, the exchanges were saying, guys, you, you got to give us two weeks notice. We got to have a process. So we keep getting better and better. I, I think it's a lot of fun. Totally. I completely agree. Roth, there's one question on the bottom. You actually brought it up in our in our live stream prep. By the way, we also prep for these things, guys. So uh, <laughs> you can see, you know, like Ralph said, training, right? So I'll, I'll kick it off with the Trollolino comment of, uh, this is a big one on you know the whole um, possible snark exploit. So how can we be sure that there has been no exploits on you know or counterfeiting of Zen? Uh, so we can't be 100% sure. That's the whole point 
Uh, and from the beginning you know, of, of this technology, it, this has always been a risk and will always be a risk because if we, you know, it, it's a trade-off. If we want our users to have pure privacy, then of course we can't audit what they're doing. We can't audit you know, all of these addresses that they keep completely private. What we can do and what we have done is we've audited total uh, known supply on the market and looked for any aberration there. So if someone had counterfeited and you know, if you want to counterfeit, you're probably going to want to take the counterfeited Zen out of a shield ad address and try to sell it, right? Or try to do something with it, try to use it. Um, we have not observed this at all. Uh, Zcash has not observed it. Komodo has not observed it. So to the best of our knowledge, best of understanding, uh, thus far, we have not observed any exploits uh, from this particular vector. So that, that's the best that we can say right now. Well, we, and to add on to that, it's also possible to track how much funds have gone into the shielded address yeah. pool and how much have come out. Uh, we'll know there's a problem if more comes out than has gone in, uh, and we can decide what to do at that point. That would indicate a, a problem. Um, but, you know, uh, there's certainly some bit of audibility there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to address BlockDAG um, as, as regarding side chains. So I have a question here, uh, since Block. DAG requires a full code rewrite. Uh, won't the rewrite cause issues to future side chains? Uh, and actually, remember this from last time, and, and I asked Maurizia about this. Um, so we're, we're developing a side chain model, and the side chain model is very uh, comprehensive. And so it's important that when you take, when you lock Zen and put it on a side chain and do stuff with it, and then bring it back to the main chain, that there's the same amount. Um, and that there's uh, ways to get it, it done properly. I'll give you an, it, the, well, there's lots of different examples that we can use for that. Um, so when we design block DAG, what we'll make sure that we design the block DAG implementation to work in conjunction with side chains. So that's you know, part of the design specification. Uh, it would be unfortunate if a block DAG, all it could do is run a single, um, you know, basically Zen implementation. Uh, that would be a big step back. So, of, of course, we're going to work on the block DAG implementation that'll work alongside with side chains. Yeah, and um, so a question here on the menu. Does the... No, absolutely not. There, there's no reason to, uh, a new marketplace would make Zen drop. It's just as plausible that people use this new marketplace to put dollars into Zen. Uh, so this is really nice for the project. Overall, having more such channels actually increases our value um, you know, economically because there, there are now new ways for people to come into our, our product. Okay, so I'll take this easy one. Uh, what's planned on the restore ledger seed? So one of the things that I noticed, because I have my Zen in multiple accounts on Ledger, and the initial implementation of restoring a Ledger account on the Sphere uh, did the first account, uh, but it, in order to get the second and third account, there's other uh, change, there's other, uh, things that need to be done. Uh, it's, I believe that's what the update is. It should be pretty straightforward uh, to do that. Um, and uh, let's see, can we build a website on the Horizon Network? So actually, and that's from Trollino, this is an interesting one and it goes into a part of the Zen Pub that uh, we, we've thought about and um, some of this, the technology to do what we're doing is being built in parallel. So if we look at uh, IPFS or the commercial implementation of uh, that which is Filecoin, that's a way for people to build um, websites or publish things uh, in a distributed fashion. Um, the thing is, if you're going to publish something in a distributed and anonymous fashion, how do you then let people know that it exists? So I see um, the private messaging and the anonymous messaging one-to-one -one, or as it goes forward and we can do uh, view-only keys that we can then distribute to people one-to-many the private messaging one-to-many can be a uh, notification layer so that if somebody publishes something anonymously like even heck a website um, we can then use the private or anonymous messaging capability of Zen to notify people about that so um, appreciate you bringing that up. And another question from Cholino on, so let's see, saw a, a drop in active addresses on Zcash uh, after ASICs went online, uh, and actually from 120,000 active addresses, 
17,000 active addresses. Uh, so I, I don't know if these numbers are accurate, uh, but do we have such stats on Horizon? Uh, so the stats, I imagine, would be available, but we don't, we don't, we don't collect these ourselves. It would require a little bit, bit of blockchain analysis. Um, this would actually be a really interesting research project. And the one thing I'll say here, guys, if you are going to attempt some research like this, don't do just a straight uh, comparison. You're obviously going to want to put in some controlled variables because in econometrics, they're always, you know, these are complex systems and you have at minimum dozens of variables that can influence things simultaneously. So you have to put in controls and not just look at the, you know, the simple uh, differences. But very interesting research project. Thanks, Carolina. Yeah, and that reminds me that uh, when I read the uh, Grayscale Investment Trust uh, overview of Horizon, they did talk about tracking different addresses, um, mm -hmm. and certainly addresses that are in use are uh, some uh, a metric of you know how many people are, are actually using it. And so as we go and do meetups to try to work to get new users to know about Horizon, um, or and do secure nodes and super nodes and other types of community growth. Heck, the internationalization, which we've done from the very beginning, the, the, the quickest way to add new users is to take all the content that we've created and the systems that we've created and go to another country or another language mm -hmm. um, and start working to gain users in that language. I think that's gonna have longer term salutary effects. Um, and it's, again, the go to market or working to get users or working to actually build a crypto ecosystem. So we're trying to do everything that we can do to have people use Zen as a peer to peer payment and for merchants to accept Zen and to make it easy for people to do that. And then once they accept it, to make it easy for them to track it, to use it, to hold their money in Zen, convert it to their local currency. You know, every time we do something, we find all sorts of more things that we, we want to do to make it even better and more and easier for people to use. Uh, a question here on our budget. So we went from 10% block reward to treasury to 20%. Uh, but we did that when Zen was dollars cents. Um, so first, first of all, we're stable as a project. We can pay, we can pay our contemporaneous bills, and we can continue development on the current roadmap that we have outlined. Uh, it, it's painful though. It's it's painful to see the price you know dropping like this, or you know kind of heading down in the market, still you know, sitting in this bear market. We are prepared though for prolonged bear markets, and actually part of this whole treasury increase was exactly for this to make sure that we're sustainable and stable so so far at these price levels we're still hanging in there and there are no changes to our current roadmap okay so there's a question can we elaborate on the staking restrictions i'm going to interpret this question to be uh from what uh, alan talked about for changing the time on challenges for secure nodes and super nodes so as the um technology like the um the shielded transaction times goes down, we're looking at making it a shorter time on the secure and super node challenges so that we can maintain the same level of hardware, uh, hardware level or equivalent hardware level. So the purpose of the exercise behind the secure nodes and super nodes, so start out with secure nodes, we want to have uh, nodes up and running that have a full copy of the blockchain that are open for people to send uh, tr connect their wallets to and send transactions to that if our system gets attacked or our uh, network gets blocked in a country that the system stays up and running. So if people are coming to rely on Horizon and want to be able to uh, use for peer-to-peer -peer, uh, payments uh, on a regular basis, that we have to make sure that their wallets can reach those nodes. So that's what secure nodes are. And of course, it's, um, it uses TLS encryption. So uh, people can't just snoop the traffic. And there's some people that are making their loads, nodes listen on port 443. So anybody connecting to it, it looks just like, you know, pretty much as somebody connecting to a, uh, a secure website. And uh, super nodes are, have to have a lot more capability, and we're putting that capability in place because we want to make sure that they can run all the side chains. So the short answer is yes, we're looking at changing the, uh, the challenge time on our secure and super node tracking so that 
the uh, the hardware requirements, you know, the amount of memory and uh, processor and drive space uh, required to operate it stay the same. Hey, Ralph, I'm not sure if you can hear me. My I can now. Sound seems to be frozen. Yep, I can hear you, Rob. Go okay. Forward. Cool. Well, if I'm coming through. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe I'll let you hand, handle these questions. Okay. Since my, my connection seems to be a bit slow. All right. Well, I can hear you. But um, so the, uh, the for secure nodes, reducing the amount of stake address changes per nodes. Um, well, I don't know. There's always improvements to be made on the node tracking system. I'm glad that we're working this out in parallel with the development of the application for um, uh, on, on the distributed. I noticed that when uh, you know an IP address is used, it's hard to reuse it uh, for another um, another node. And, um, so let's see. Let's look at some other questions here. Uh, uh, yeah. So apparently, go oh, for yeah, it, Rob. Sorry, I can hear you. Okay, cool, cool, perfect. Yeah, I was just gonna knock out the VPN quick because we've got three of these. So yes, VPN uh, nodes that run VPNs, just like other apps that we end up building, will share in revenue streams from the VPN service. So this should be an additional source of revenue. Um, it would be opt-in for sure. We would never want to force node operators to run a VPN, in particular because VPNs could be uh, not not okay in some jurisdictions that we don't ever want our node operators to be um you know at, at risk we're in trouble and let's see so uh yes yeah, so we, we actually haven't specified the node type that would be able to run run the service but just off the top of my head i can see, I, I see no reason to exclude super nodes from being able to run applications Okay, so we got a question here on when do we plan to take humans out of the loop so that we can't be mm -hmm. shut down by uh, a nation state? And that has been uh, a priority from day one. Uh, it's Great what question. we're working to uh, do all along. It's why we have the treasury system and that we're working to implement it. Um, because, you know, right now, the the, the Zen Blockchain Foundation, you know, we make a, a lot of the decisions. We try to get uh, as much input as we can from the community and the team that it does all the work are people that started out as community members in most cases uh, and, and stepped up with additional responsibility. So uh, we do this in uh, small steps. So one of the first things that we do is we make sure that we're very internationalized um, so that if there's a problem in any one country, uh, the people in the rest of the world can continue to work and operate. It's certainly why we have uh, nodes all over the place and uh, why we encourage people to run nodes not just on VPSs, on virtual uh, private uh, servers, but also on their own hardware. Uh, I know I run uh, nodes on my own hardware, uh, so there's uh, less restriction and, and less uh, chance for, uh, for issues to be that way. So treasury system, uh, and then having the centralized applications run decentralized. So those are the two main things that we're working to get humans out of the loop. And it's definitely, um, you know, that's why we're doing all the development that we're doing, to, to make that happen as soon as possible. Yeah, very well said. I, I think that's a wrap, Ralph. That was a great question to end it off on as well. Excellent. All righty. Well, we're going to do this uh, next month. You know, for people that are watching this uh, on replay, if you have questions that you want to uh, have addressed, uh, you, you can certainly join the live stream and type them in on the YouTube. Uh, I, I would expect that if you're on Discord and you type a question in there um, sometime between now and next month on the monthly update chat, that will work towards uh, addressing that question. And really appreciate everybody coming out and uh, watching and, and being part of the community and, and working hard to let everybody in, know in your local area about Horizon. And uh, join us on Discord, join yeah. us on Telegram. We've got lots of great stuff on the blog. Our, our, our website's always up to date with new information and please help us bring new users in. You want, uh, you want a higher price? Some, some people want a higher price. We want more users, more, more people that are part of our community, more people that know about what we're doing and believe in what we're doing. Rob, I'll let you finish off. I mean, I don't know if I can say anything better than that. So <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. Like the video, and uh, let, let's keep moving forward as a project. Thank you. Thank you.